Hey y'all, welcome back to another vlog. I'm Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. So I'm sitting here editing this current vlog and I realized that I never did an intro. Um, just, I'll be all over the place y'all. So please give me a little grace. You know, I really do have to figure out some better organization from my vlogging. I just wanted to start this video off and say that this is another um, Houston House Hunters video, House Hunters Houston. I don't believe there's actually a closing in this one. This one is just more following me around for the month and balancing um, my clients. So I hope you enjoy. Hello vlog. I am um, extremely late with the updates. But let's see. The last thing I think I told y'all was we went and looked at that last home, the model home that they just absolutely loved. We crunched some numbers and we decided to put an offer on the house. And they got it. <laughs> so that happened. So it was like, okay, well, now, you know, that the litter fire under their heinies to sell their other property. So we listed their property for sale um, like as soon as we signed the contract on the new home. We had a closing date of May 7th for the new home. Um, so we needed to make sure that we got their house sold pretty quickly because they're gonna need the, um, the money they make from that house to put Where down. You? Thank you, thank you, Mom. Proceeds? Proceeds. <laughs> Money, whatever. Cash? <laughs> Cash. They need the coin. The coins. Where the money reside, where the money reside. They need that, okay? So, um, well, let me clarify. The, the purchase of the new house is not contingent on them buying the, um, <laughs> My head. I wish my two clients didn't have contingency up there. <laughs> the purchase anyway. of the purchase of the new house is not contingent on the sale of their current home, but because of what they personally want to do with their finances, for them it is right. So we got the new house under contract. We pretty much two days later put their current house on the market. Um, didn't do any real renovations. We just threw it up there and let it go. Um, we put it on the market on a Sunday and by Wednesday um, we had 41 showings and 15 offers on that house. Damn! You didn't know? 41! 41 showings. Mine may actually 41 oh. showing. <laughs> we need to drop the price of our house so we can get for it. <laughs> the house is listed at oh. $205,000. Um, three bedroom, two and a half bath, pretty good size garage. The garage. God, my head hurts. What's that thing in the back car? Backyard. Um, all bedrooms up. Definitely, you know, need some just some TLC around the house, but a good house. Um, and yeah, so 41 showings and 15 offers later, every single offer was asking price or above. We received, I think, 10 of the offers themselves were right at 215. So we sat down, we went through all of the offers. You know, a lot of them were just very similar. Um, no real <clears throat> distinctive, you know, choose this one over this one. Um, but at the end of the day, we chose one. Um, chose one that was an FHA loan. Right now, at this point in time, we're wishing we should have went conventional, but it is what it is. And um, we were trying, well, we were trying to, you know, kind of have a heart and give it to somebody that actually really needs a house and not so much like an investor. Did they send a letter? Uh, not really, but I could tell from when I had talked to him and stuff. Hmm. Mother is not nearly as soft as I am, <laughs> clearly. But anyway, so we had pulled, it had boiled down to, to three. Um, and so the offer that we selected was um, 
They were offering two fifteen, so ten thousand dollars above asking price. They offered to pay for everything. The only thing they asked for was a home warranty. So they were paying title policy. They're paying survey. Um, no seller concessions. Five day option period. Uh, yeah. I think they even went, you know, 500 above for earnest money. Yeah, they were... They paying all the closing costs? Not, not closing costs. Oh. Well, that's not everything. Well, not, they're not paying closing costs. Nobody offered to do that. My name? <laughs> okay, my bad. It's your blog, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> Anyways, so here we are. Um, that was Thursday. Today <clears throat> is now... Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh no, that was Wednesday when we chose the offer then. Yeah, we chose the offer Wednesday night, signed it. So there's, mommy, stop sniffling. I'm sorry. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Five day option period. They did their inspection this morning and have sent us an amendment of um, what they would like done on the property. They want the roof fixed. They have a list of about uh, 20 things. Some very minor, some could be eh, um, but um, the sellers made it very clear from the beginning that they weren't going to do any work, they would just contribute funds. Um, they claimed that once they had the inspection report done, they sent it to their handyman and he said it would be about $8,500 worth of work. Um, however, the buyer would like to find a common ground and would be agreeable to forty-five thousand towards closing costs. Is what they're asking us. Forty-five thousand or hundred? Um, hundred. My head hurts, y'all. <laughs> um, forty-five hundred. They need a new realtor. <laughs> Whatever. Just 40, kidding. Forty-five hundred <laughs> towards closing. So we have responded to them, well, or are about to respond to them and say that we are willing to give $4,000 off the price of the home. And why we're doing that is because we are slightly worried about the appraisal um, and how much the house will actually appraise for. They have a VFHA loan. Um, so if the house does not appraise, there will be one of two or three options. Either we say, okay, well, we'll back away and find somebody that's willing to pay the appraisal price, or they will come up with cash to make the difference of the appraisal difference, or we will meet in the middle and just lower the price to <coughs> appraisal price, I guess. So that's where we're at right now. That's just that's the best way that I can catch all up on what's been going on over the past um couple of days so that's that hopefully um we send this and we'll sign it and then i will ask the buyer's agent to have the lender go ahead and order their appraisal kind of asap because today is now march march today is april april 5th um, and we would, we really want to be able to close on this property. I think we have scheduled this closing for May 5th, but, um, if we can, the sooner we can close the better and appraisals are taking about two weeks to come back in because it's just popping out here in these streets. So that's that y'all. That's all the update that I have for y'all. Uh, is it all the updates I have for y'all? Yeah, everybody else is just building. They're in the building process. Nothing real, nothing really going on. We just building houses. All right. It is Sunday, April 11th, and today we are doing an open house on my parents' house. Did I? I don't even know. Thank you. I don't even know if I've mentioned it this vlog that my parents have listed the house, the house that I live in. Um, we put it up for sale April 1st. Um, and we've had some good traction on it, but no offers, which in this market is crazy. And we kind of already knew this 
was going to happen because um, of the location of the house. It's on a, a pretty busy road. So a lot of the feedback that we have been getting is simply that. Like people like the house. They think it's a great house, but they're not so much a fan of the location. So this is just going to be one of those situations where it has to just be the right family. Um, so I'm going to do an open house on it today. We I had somebody host an open house on it yesterday. I was flying yesterday. So um, someone did one yesterday. They said I think they had about maybe six people come through. Um, and so I'm doing one today. We actually have three scheduled shows showings for the house today um, that are starting now at 10 30 um, the open house technically starts at 2 but I'm I might just go back a little earlier um, and then I've actually had a few people call me um, off of the open house as well saying that they wanted to stop by so hopefully I you know just being able to talk to them in person and you know tell them what we might be willing to do um, as far as the house and incentives I guess and things like that um, may entice people just to put in the offer and then hopefully we can negotiate some some things so that's where we're at today uh, yeah so I'm getting some Smoothie King right now to nourish my body. Then I need to go print some things for the open house. Just kind of like an open house sign-in sheet. And that's it, y'all. So I'll see y'all in a bit. All right, y'all. So we have the sign in the yard. Balloons, balloons, open house. This is my parental's house, my house. It's for sale. As y'all can see, this is the street that we live off of. It's just a lot of through traffic, really. It's not like crazy or rowdy. It's just a lot of through traffic that comes from here because this will lead you, if you go straight down for about 10 minutes, it leads you to a major highway. So because of that, um, I guess you could say the house is not maybe, I don't want to say family friendly. Oh, yes, there we go. I don't want to say the house is not family friendly because clearly it is. Um, as far as the house itself, just the location isn't necessarily kid friendly. So if it's, um, a family with, whew. so if it's a family with younger kids that are considering this house, they would probably lean towards no, just based off location and it being off of a busy street. Now. Let me go back outside and show y'all something else. <laughs> Here's my upset dogs because they're locked away. So as y'all can see, there's also, we have a pretty long driveway, right? And there's there's no gate. Ah! Aspen! <laughs> ah! 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 He's upset, y'all. He's just gonna have to stay upset. Ah! Ah! Aspen, stop. So there's no gate here. Now, if y'all can see across the street, let me try to zoom in and get a little closer. So across the street there, you see how they have a gate. So that gives you a bit more protection. So what my parents are thinking, if we don't get any offers by this weekend, is possibly putting up a gate just to kind of give maybe that idea of it, you know, being closed off to the street or um, putting it in the the notes on the MLS that you know they're willing to give money towards it so yeah that has literally been the only feedback that we've gotten on the house because not being biased I mean I live here but it really it's a, it's a good house you know two master bedrooms my room is technically the second master bedroom it's up good size rooms Where's the, oh, there he is. Good size rooms. I'll just give y'all a tour. No, stay outside. They are upset, y'all. Okay, so we're at the door. To your right, you have your formal living. Okay, your stairs. Your foyer area. All right, so this is gonna be your first primary bedroom. This room is about, I think like, 16 by 16, it's a pretty good size. Um, you have your separate shower, jetted tub, dual sinks, toilet over there, 
large, deep walk-in closet, coat closet, and your family living room here. Then you have your utility room with storage cabinets and a powder bath, right? Right? Then the backyard. Okay. This is the backyard. Large backyard. The deck takes up most of it, but you know, it's a nice deck. So large backyard, two car garage, and then there's more like yard over there. That's where all the, um, my stepfather does all his um, gardening and stuff, his vegetables and whatever. What, what do they call it? Okay, let's head upstairs. As you come up the stairs, you have a pretty large flex space game area, whatever you want to call it. You make this into whatever. My mom used it as her <laughs> hair salon when she retired. There's another um, coat closet, store closet. This is the second primary bedroom. That's how we have it advertised, AKA my bedroom. My room is about 14 by 14, so pretty large. Um, my closet is also a good size walk-in with way too much stuff. And then it still has an ensuite bathroom as well. And then just, you know, shower or tub. Sorry, it's a tub. And then we have our Jack and Jill bedrooms. So this is the office or that's what we use it for, but it's just a bedroom. Um, good size bedroom. Bathroom. Bathroom. And then this is my brother's room. Um, oh, I forgot to show you the closet. But, well, as y'all can see, storage for now. <laughs> storage, but large walk-in. So, this is my new listing, aka my house, um, and yeah, we're just, we're trying to get it sold. My parents um, have already purchased, or they're currently building another house. It will be done um, by the end of next month, probably before, because they are moving very quickly. So, of course, they're, they're really trying to get this one sold before they close on the next one. So we'll see what happens. It's listed at um, $335,000. So by the time this goes up and if we haven't sold it, let me know if y'all know somebody that wants it. Did I say $335? $335,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> y'all so i am out this evening with simone and i realized i just edited this other vlog my last client's name with a short sale her name was simone also this is a totally different simone <laughs> just fyi um but i am out with simone looking at um this is our third time going out looking at properties um she really really likes this one yesterday y'all i had a case of a stomach bug I think I had food poisoning I really don't know and so we were supposed to go out yesterday to look and I just I couldn't make it so she went out by herself um, I had her meet the listing agent for the property there and she liked it so now we're back out today to see the actual location that they have available and what the finishes are and things like that and see if we want to put a contract in on it um, she's currently in an apartment lease right now and it doesn't end until September and I believe these will be finished around July or so. Um, but we're going to make it work, right? We're going to make it work. So we got the outside. This is our surrounding areas. Got some new construction right across the street. Why are you doing it right away? Yes.
Were those completed or were they sheetrock yeah, also? No, 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 both of them, I think, were, one of them was not completed, but then the other one had, they all had, like, appliances, they were still working. Okay. One of them was less completed than the other. Yeah, I like the big windows. Yeah. I love that. And then I think the this the bathroom had a I don't know what you call this window. What what do you call it? Oh, it's skylight. Skylight, yeah. Oh, okay. Above the tub, which I really like. All right, going into a completed one to see what the finishes look like. Different floor plan, but just want to get a, a feel of how fancy they are. I like a lot. Yeah. Oh, this is a big powder bath. What's the, do you know how much these are? Um, these ones are already on your contract. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, the, the asking price, I think, was 285 Yeah, that's a good size yard. You could do a lot back here. Yeah, you could. And I think even the other one is bigger than Yeah, one. it looks bigger. Yeah, you can still get like cute little furniture. Yeah. I like the cabinets. I do like the cabinets. I really like the garden. Yeah, it looks and they good. They have like different shades. And I, I really like the dark ones a lot. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this backsplash so much. Yeah, this is probably like my least favorite out of all the ones I saw. Mm -hmm. Bedroom's a good size. Yeah. Patio. Nice large shower. Yeah, this closet is everything. This room's a little small. Okay, so we like the house. We are going back to where the listing agent, the builder is, the builder's office basically. Um, and I'm going to just get some detailing because what Simone is just more curious about than anything else is just kind of like what finishes she'll be able to select in the home since it's, you know, not complete. But usually with builders, they kind of pre-select everything and they probably already bought things. So I don't know if she'll have a wide range of being able to select finishes here, but we're going to see. We're going to find out. Mm -hmm. Cool, downstairs. That's in all the kitchens and it was also in the bathroom. Selection time, y'all. Cabinet. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. So, looks like we found a house. Yay! Um, Simone has decided to go with the first one that I showed y'all, the one that's not complete. Um, we're going to go ahead and submit the contract tomorrow. 
um, because the listing agent, I guess, is out of town or something. I don't really know. But um, I'm going to need to get in contact with him because the house is not listed on the, the market, on the MLS. So that is kind of a good thing. Um, the house is not listed on the MLS which is a good thing so it's not like a whole bunch of people just really out here looking for it i think they have like one or two properties listed on the mls and then when people go to look at those they end up showing them the other properties that they also have available so that's how we ended up with this one because we went to go look at another one originally and da, 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 da. so she really likes that she's comfortable she's comfortable with the location um the layout of the home is great it has good backyard space so yeah, that's good. Um, and then that should be like a July close date. Um, yeah. And even if it's a little later than that, like if, you know, things happen or whatever, like I said, she doesn't move out of her apartment until September. So the later, the better. And fun fact, if y'all did not know, um, when you close on a house, your first mortgage payment isn't really due until probably like another um 45 days so you get like first month's rent free not really but you know what i mean so you skip the next month and then basically that that following month is when you usually get your first mortgage payment so that's why she's like okay well if it's an end of july close date then her first mortgage payment probably won't be due until september and then that's when her lease ends so she hopefully will it'll end up working out to where she's not having to to double pay for rent and mortgage um anyways y'all the weather's bad let me pay attention i'll um, update y'all with everything else later so i thought my real estate days are over or my day was over but it's not <laughs> mother has a closing tomorrow and we are here at the house that she's closing on and she was very kind and she bought her client a closing gift or gifts per se let's check it out so what are the goodies uh, stuff for her kids crunching much cleaning supplies Our house be thankful, count your blessings, be kind and tender hearted, forgive and forget, always be honest, comfort one another, and keep your promises. That's so sweet. Aww. Hello, y'all. Happy April 15th. We are out in the streets. I'm in my favorite place in my car. <laughs> Today I am, well, this morning I wrote a contract for Simone on a new construction um, property that's still currently being built. So that's good. She's not exactly under contract yet because the contract is not executed. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I just kind of got that out of the way for today. We went and looked at those properties um, last night. She liked it, woke up this morning, did the contract, and then later on today, I'll go over the contract with her in detail. Um, she's a first time home buyer, but anytime you buy a home, you should always go over your contracts in detail. Um, and then now I am, I've been working with um, a client that um, wants to lease. She's moving her family from California, San Diego, one of my favorite cities, to Houston. And um, initially she was going to buy, but you know, now she wants to, to lease for about a year just to kind of get a feel of where she wants to live. Houston has so many great suburbs that it's kind of hard to decide. So I'm out and about. I'm going to go look at six lease homes for her today. And um, hopefully we can narrow one down because I'm off this weekend, right? As a real estate agent, yes, like there really is truly no downtime. But, you know, you still have to have like self-care time and just enjoy your life outside of working. So this weekend, I have a baby shower in New Orleans and I'm going to make the best of it. 
So I gotta uh, get everything I gotta get done real estate wise today. Today is Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, and I fly out. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, y'all. We just looked at six lease homes um, in a span of about two and a half hours. It's not too bad. We went from Cyprus to Katy to Sugarland, and the sixth one was the one that they like. The time frame for moving in is like Memorial Day weekend. Um, this home won't actually be available until the 7th of May, so that's really good because you know, as far as leasing homes, people really try to get tenants in as soon as possible, clearly, so they're not missing out on any money. So um, I always like to tell my clients that are wanting to lease, um, you know, try not to get started on that process too early or apply to homes, you know, too, too soon. Really try to do it within like a 30 day time frame. Because even if you do apply and if other people apply as well, um, and if you all are equally um, qualified as far as income, um, credit score and things of that nature, they're probably going to go with a person that, you know, has the sooner move-in date just so they can, you know, get the house off the market. So the good thing about this one is, is that it has that May 7th move-in date, so that would only leave the house, you know, vacant for about three weeks or so. Um, so that's really good. We did go in there, though, and um, there's still two people definitely living in there, and the house is nowhere close to being, you know, show ready viewing ready like it was it it was different but luckily it was still a really nice house and i can kind of see outside of all the clutter it looks like they're moving you know it really looks like you know they just have i don't even i don't it just there was a lot of stuff everywhere um and i had my client on facetime and I didn't have my earbuds in. She was like, oh. She was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, it's still a really nice house, though. The nicest one that we had seen today. Three of them were three of them were good. Three of them were like, no. Nah. And then this one just was the best one out of all of them. So hopefully we can get this application put in. They accept it because they, they meet all of their qualification requirements. And yeah, everything should go good from there. Fingers crossed. hello good people so update Simone and I went and looked at that house last week that I showed you all and we liked it we submitted a contract and it was accepted on Friday Woo! yes so now we are under contract on that house earnest money has been paid um, and we're closing July 30th. The house will be ready way before that. I think like closer to like mid-June, but she doesn't want to close until July. So they're going to do that. Um, and yeah, so today I am going to get out and go take a look at all of my clients that are under contract on new construction homes and just go see the progress that they're at as far as the new construction homes you know see if everything is on time i could do that from the comfort of my bedroom office and just call people but you know it's nice to go just get your eyes on it take pictures send it to my clients and uh just get out the house so all right y'all made it to the first house this is miss Marilyn's house progression amazing let's go take a quick spin so framework is done for the most part. Still gotta do some sheet rocking. House. 
why uh oh I want to take a look at the backyard and see because that was one of her big things she wanted to make sure she had a nice size backyard so we upgraded and put her on a premium lot it's not fenced but I'm thinking it's gonna pretty much go as far as this fence is right there on the side all right house number two this is the one that um just got under contract last week friday this is simone's house right 4806 yeah that's it y'all all right house number three y'all and i came at the perfect time because they are currently digging up the walkway um, y'all know this is the model home that we have under construction so I think I've told y'all those two windows right here at the bottom that whole wall is going to be knocked out and turned into the garage so all this pretty landscaping that they had here they have to remove it all right house number four Okay, I made a mistake on this one, y'all. I was so distracted. And it's not this particular one that's being built. It's the slab right to the left of it. That is the actual lot. Um, but I was just distracted. I had a lot of things going on. And I did not look at the address. I was like, this house is moving pretty quickly. <laughs> Gate guy just came um, for the house. The deets? Yes. What's happening? I'm getting a metal fence. So where's it going to go? How much is it going to cost? You don't need to know all of that. Yes, I do. Why? Mom. It's 3100 Okay, that's not bad. Okay. So we're going to go six feet down here. And it's going to slope because the side of the yard is sloped. So the post is going to be here. And then we're going to have a 12-foot gate that goes across to about here. And then we're going to have another piece that comes to here. And then a six-footer that goes up to here. And oh. it's going to open this way. Inside. And we're having a um, solar paneled electronic arm that opens it. That's powered by oh, the okay. solar power. Go ahead and upgrade the listing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, update the listing saying that we're gate is coming. It's being installed. Are we making a price change too? Three thirty-five. Three twenty-five. Pay for that gate. Huh? Three twenty-five. Three twenty-five. Well, you still got. Hey, anything to bring a buyer right about now? Well, we have two buyers coming to the showings today. Okay. Well, we wait till after that. Let me call the lady from yesterday. Okay. And right. let's let's make a decision Friday. Okay. It's Wednesday. All right, y'all. That's the update on the parental's house. Gate coming. We're going to decide if we're going to do a price decrease on decrease. Friday. That's what I said, decrease. Oh, I said increase. It would be nice if we did an increase. Because <laughs> <laughs> Friday will make 23 days that the house has been on the market and we haven't gotten an offer. So, time to go to work. Good morning, y'all. Today is April 23rd, Friday. So in that last clip, you saw me checking in with my clients, okay, the parents, about the sale of their home. And um, they were getting a quote to put up the gate and we said that we would reconvene Friday if we hadn't received any offers on the house by today that we were gonna lower the price. So spoke with them this morning. Um, I'm working, I'm flying, I'm in somebody's city. Um, <laughs> St. Louis and um, so spoke with them this morning we're gonna reduce the price $15,000 I think is that what we agreed upon yeah 15,000 so we originally had it listed at 335 we're gonna knock it down to 320 um, and then also update the listing um, with just a few more details about the home, like when the roof was put on, just so, you know, just just so people can know more about the house from just the listing itself. 
and then also um, post a picture of you know, the style of gate that they're going to be installing and say that that will be installed um, prior to closing on the home. So hopefully that can just, you know, motivate somebody to submit an offer. I, we knew it was going to take a while um, to get an offer on the house. Like I've just been saying, just based on the location of the home. Um, Y'all seen the home, the the professional video is posted on the YouTube channel, so y'all can go take a look and, you know, feel free to, to leave feedback. I mean, hey, whatever. Um, but 23 days and not one offer, I wasn't really expecting that so much, honestly. So, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's just one of them things like, you just do it. It is what it is at this point. So we're going to do that. And then I have to um, get ready to fly. I have a, a busy day of flying today. So I wanted to make sure that I t um, got all my real estate stuff handled that I know needs to be done this morning. Um, have to f I need to touch bases with a few property management companies that need to send me a check. Um, my other, I need to send and, you know, receive some documentation for some other stuff. A lot of real estate, after you find the house, is just a lot of paperwork, honestly. It's just a lot of documents going back and forth. So, that's all I'm doing right now. So, of course, I'll keep y'all updated. Hello, hello, good people. It is the last day of April, April 30th, and we're just going to go ahead and close out our month of real estate vlog here with just an update of where all my clients stand in their perspective transactions. So y'all know, if y'all watched Marches, I have quite a few um, clients under contract on new construction, or not even March, this vlog, y'all should have seen that. <laughs> um, so we have Miss Frances. Um, her house is, you know, just being built on time. Um, that's really it. That's what happens when you build from the ground. You know, you have just kind of months of of silence, almost. Just there's there's not a lot to do. Um, so she is there, and then we also have Alexis and Jay. They're kind of in the same position as well. We had a little bit of a tug and war but just it took us a little longer to kind of get all of their um, financial documents in place to really get them um, pre-approved on this home and it was a little scary because they had paid the earnest money and um, they just it was it was taking some time <laughs> for us to get those documents to the lenders um, that they um, required um, but I'm, I'm happy to say that Alexis and Jay got all of their things together everything is looking good the house is being built and so they are on track as well um, then we have I'm gonna touch them last because I have a little bit more to say about them um, then we have Simone that we just got under contract what like two weeks ago um, Everything's going smooth there. She's currently um, in underwriting and, you know, just getting all of that taken care of. Her house should be done, you know, by the end of by the end of June, probably even, maybe even before that. But, you know, we won't be closing until the end of July. Um, and then we have Nikibia and Charles, who's really the ones that I wanted to update you all on because we should be closing on both of their transactions. Um, early next month, the 5th and the 10th were the contract to close dates for their properties. So I heard from the sales agent on the house that they're buying. Um, we were supposed to be doing our third party inspection today, April 30th. We were supposed to be doing our third party inspection on the home, but they haven't finished doing construction on the home. So y'all remember, this is the one that is the model home for the community and I was saying that you know they have to um, 
put put up the put in the garage and do the driveway and all of that stuff. So they're they're running behind on timing. Don't really know why, um, but they are, which which can happen with new construction. You know, things happen. So the sales agent told me that she would have an update for us um, this upcoming Monday. I guess that's the fourth to let us know, you know, if we're going to have to push back our closing date on that property or not. Um, and when we can reschedule um, the third party inspection to be done. I was really hoping it wouldn't, you know, be pushed back, but it's actually raining all weekend this weekend. It's going to be raining like for three, four days. So, of course, rain kind of puts a halt to construction and things like that. Um, so, we're going to see where we're at with that. And then for the house that they're selling, um, the lender. I don't, you know, and I always feel like in these vlogs I'm blaming the lender, and I, I don't ever like to like come off like that um, because it's you know what it, things happen. But anyways, the lender sent an email saying that they had got the appraisal on the 19th, right? They ordered the appraisal on April 9th. The appraiser went out on the 19th and appraised the home. I emailed the appraiser, spoke with them, and. You know, I was like, is everything good? Because you haven't said anything as far as, you know, if the appraisal came in short. You know, if it comes in over, they don't necessarily tell you like it is what it is. But if it comes in short, then, you know, we have to make adjustments due to um, the financing portion of things. So they were like, oh, yeah, everything's good. But because the appraisal doesn't belong to my sellers, it belongs to my the buyers, I don't really have the right to request you know to view the appraisal unless they unless the buyers are willing to send it you know so I just had to take his word for it um, so that happened and I was like oh okay well we're good and he was like yeah you know da, da, da. and he kind of sounded like when I was talking to him he kind of sounded like he was distracted honestly y'all and so I know I asked him like two or three times I was like yeah, we're good like we're good on the appraisal you know like we can move forward he was like yeah we're good da, da, da. so then here comes this week I get an email from the listing from the the buyer's agent and saying hey Alexia um, the appraisal is in and it came back short which we kind of already had an idea in our mind that the appraisal will come back short um, because they offered ten thousand dollars over what the sales price was and when I did the comps on the home it was between like you know 200 and 205 is what the comps were showing we listed at 205 the appraisal came back in at 202 202 I think so and that's still three thousand dollars short of what our original asking price was so you know that was a little bit of a bummer and then this also kind of goes back to um you know like we had 15 different offers on this home um and we selected this buyer for whatever reasons and um you know when you you look back on things or <clears throat> in hindsight you're kind of like man i wish i would have went with this offer i wish i went with this one because maybe we wouldn't have to deal so much with this appraisal contingency we would have took the cash offer or whatever but at this point, you know, lessons are learned, you know, decisions have been made and we don't really have the time to spare to say, okay, let's nix this contract and pick another buyer because, you know, like they're supposed to be closing on their new house soon as well and they want this money to be able to put down on the new home. Um, so we just decided to negotiate with the current buyer and say, hey, can you at least come up with the $3,000 to get it to the original asking price? Because he was like, okay, you know, let's just leave it at appraisal price. And I was like, well, no, because that's that's almost $13,000 13, less than what you all offered. Um, you know, so we ended up um, coming to an agreement that they would meet us halfway and then we also um, agreed that we were not going to buy them a home warranty. So that brought us back up $1,500-ish, somewhere kind of like that. Um, so we ended with like a sales price of like 
a little bit below 204, 203, something. I can't remember numbers off the top of my head. So, you know, it's not exactly what we wanted to net or what they wanted to net. But, you know, it's it at this point in time, like I was just saying, y'all, we just really don't have time to, to put the house back on the market. Because when an appraisal comes in, this is another contingency that happens in real estate contracts. You have a few different contingencies that allows for either party to back out of the contract. And so the appraisal is one when you're getting third party financing, right? So if we could not come to an agreement, the seller can say, okay, never mind, let's end this contract, or the buyer can rightfully say, okay, never mind, I don't want to pay this amount for the house and it's appraised for this amount, blah, blah, blah. Or you can do what we did and, you know, find a, a common ground. So that's what happens. Um, it, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like I said, you know, lesson, lesson learned. You know, sometimes when you have just all those offers, it's kind of hard to bet and just, re and especially when a lot of them are just so similar. Um, and like, it's really not even a buyer thing. It's just more of a, you know, it's an appraisal thing. Um, I looked at the appraisal. I scoured it over once they actually sent it because once it's below asking price, they do send it. And so I looked at it and there wasn't really anything that I can go back and like fight. You know, because like the original comp showed that it was going to be between two and two hundred five. Um, so his appraisal was pretty much spot on. Um, but yeah, y'all, that's that's it. That's all we got for the month of April. Um, next month we should have at least two closings for um, Nakivia and Charles. Um, send a prayer up for them, y'all. They lost a family member during this whole process, and it's tough. A, a mom at that. They lost a um, uh, mother in law, mom. So, you know, just send a prayer out for them, y'all. And hopefully, the closing of, you know, their old home and getting into their new home can definitely lift their spirits. So, um, but as always, y'all, I think that's all the updates that I have for y'all. I'm I'm currently driving back to Houston now from Dallas. I was at work this week for about, you know, nine, nine days working like crazy. Um, and I've decided to not fly the entire month of May because one, I took vacation because my birthday is coming up. Um, two, I have just a lot of real estate things to do. I have about four buyers that are gonna be shopping in the month of May. And you know, it's just, at, at this point, it's just not feasible for me to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like that when I have, you know, such a, a heavy load month with real estate. So I just decided not to fly this month. And that is the beauty of being a flight attendant. We have flexibility. You just gotta know how to work the system, honey, okay? Well, y'all, I thought the vlog was ending, but it's still April 30th. And by the skin of our teeth, we got a, decided offer on the house on this house the parentals house this house that i have listed for sale so we actually got this offer on thursday um and the parentals were not very comfortable with you know this particular offer um numbers wise it was pretty good other than just like a few little things here there but this particular listing agent or his buyers had not even come to see the house. And just based on all of the feedback that we have received on the house, the parentals and even myself would just feel better that, you know, if we're going to accept an offer and take the house off of the market and allow you time to decide if you want to keep the house, we would at least feel better that you know what the house looks like, you know the environment around the home before we even get into that process. So we received his offer, I sent it to the parentals, um, you know, and that was their big concern. So I called the agent and I was like, hey, this, this, and this, and this, this is what it is. We would feel a lot better before we um, say yes to your offer or even negotiate your offer that you come out and at least do a video tour for your clients and show them that the home is on the busy road, you know, there's cars driving by, there's a major stop sign here, that that does stop light, you know, just all of that, just so they can know and truly understand. It's a great house, but the street, right? So that has been 
the main feedback that we have gotten on this house since we listed it. We listed it, I listed it, April 1st or March 31st, one of those days. I think it was April 1st and today is now, and today is now, um, April 30th. Y'all already know that. So it's literally been the full month of April to take. So it's literally been the full month of April that it has taken for us to get just one actually written and submitted offer on the home. So my thing was, it's like, they're, you know, they're over there kind of being a little like picky, like, well, in this market, in this market. And I'm like, well, y'all don't really qualify for this in this market talk because it's not like we just have offers pouring in. That's not what's happening here. So it's like, I have to keep reminding them. It's just like, hello, hello. <laughs> so anyway, so the agent came out today um, and took a look at the house and he really liked it. We had another person, I had another person Thursday actually contact me and say, please, please, please don't accept the offer. Well, she asked, you know, she said, hey, do you have any offers? I said, yes, we received one. She's like, oh, well, I'm going to schedule for Friday to come see it. Please don't accept the offer until then. I said, okay, you know, I can give you until Friday noon. She came, they really loved the house, really, really, really loved the house and she called me. She's like, hey, we're going to submit an offer. And I was like, oh, great. You know, two offers in this in this little one, two day time period. Like, that's good. You know, um, and then a few hours later, she was like, you know, sorry, the buyer took the time and thought it out a little bit more. They really love the house, but the street. So that just left us back to this one offer that we literally like we actually have in hand. So fast forward to um, today. He came out, took a look at the house, or actually maybe that was Wednesday that we got the offer because today's Friday. I keep thinking today's Saturday, but none of that matters, right? He came out, did the FaceTime video tour for his clients. He texted me, hey, they're still in. They still really like the house. Um, you know, I asked him to just tell me a little bit more about his clients just, just so we can somewhat have a peace of mind. It's a mother and a daughter, mother is retired, daughter is grown, works from home, so there's no kids. So a lot of the things that, you know, a lot of people were worried about with the street, they don't really have those concerns, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I did go ahead and call their lender because, ah. So the house is listed at $320,000. They offered $336,000. Um, they are asking for $16,000 in seller contributions towards their closing costs. So that basically would net that portion of the sale to what our asking price is. So people do that a lot. I think I've talked about that in vlogs before. It, it happens. But that's, you know, that's a lot to kind of be asking for in their FHA loan. So that was like, okay, well, let's see, call their lender and just see, you know, how well has he vetted them, right? Because that's another thing, like, if we're going to be accepting offers, we don't want um just like willy-nilly lenders out here. Y'all already know, y'all already know about these lenders. So I called their lender. I said, hey, you know, can they potentially do a conventional? He, you know, he gave me the reasons for choosing FHA, which, you know, has to just do with the amount of money that they kind of have to come out of pocket with. Um, he's like, but they do have more than enough reserves. He's like, I'm not really sure why they ask for so much, but you know, like they have enough if you, you know, even if you all didn't want to give that much. Um, they also asked for a 21 day financing contingency, which basically means we would give them 21 days for their loan to be, um, you know, conditionally approved. Um, which is too long, right? Right? Like we don't want to have go through this whole process. And then 21 days later comes and they say, oh man, we weren't able to, you know, secure financing. So now we have to give them their earnest money back, um, and then start all over. So I said, okay, well, as you as the lender, can you do an approval within 14 days, two weeks? And he said, yes, I can get that done. I said, cool. Um, they also asked for a 10 day option period. You know, option period is the time for you to do your due diligence on the home. So we like take the house off of the market for 10 days, come in and allow you to do all the inspections that you want to a certain degree on the home. 
right? So we said, okay, 10 days is a little too long. Let's do seven. Because just the longer that we give them, you know, the more potential it is for them to say, hey, we don't want the home. And then we still got to get them money back. You know, like, mm, although this is the only offer, we still have to be smart about how we're moving. Um, and that's really it. They did ask for home warranty. Um, they're asking for the seller paid title policy, which is well, fine, whatever. Um, so, yeah. Um, talk to the agent again about some other things about the gate. You know, do they really, really want the gate? Because we still haven't put the gate up. And they do want the gate. Um, you know, just, just really brainstorming the vetting. Just trying to make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, we're making, you know, or the, the parents, I should say, are making the right decision with this potential buyer. But for me, I'm just like, look, we can put the house on the market for, you know, we can keep it on the market, you tell these people no, and then potentially still not receive another offer for maybe another 30 days or even longer. Who knows? So I have convinced the parents to just go ahead and we're going to send our counter offer with just a few changes of the um, financing contingency and the option period time and they need to up their earnest money to that the true one percent they have it at three thousand which isn't the true one percent um so yeah y'all <sighs> the, the i'm not <clears throat> the contract probably won't actually be executed this month um because you know it's like an hour and a half until uh, the month ends but I'm just going to end out the vlog and say, yay, we have an executed contract on the home. And they put a closing date of my birthday, June 2nd. So I was like, oh, that's nice. Collect a check on my birthday. Hey. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it, y'all. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, and yes, for anybody that's wondering, I'm still collecting a check from the parents. It's it's very reduced. <laughs> It is very reduced. I don't mind telling y'all. Generally, um, the standard is if you were listing your home for sale, you were paying your listing agent or the brokerage. So I, you know, the agent six percent, right? Let's just keep it simple. Um, usually, standard is to pay your listing agent six percent, and then that listing agent will really it's up to them how they split that six percent with themselves and then whoever brings the buyer so traditionally it's three and three percent here in texas other states do other things but in texas it's three and three percent but because my parents could have really sold this house by themselves they didn't they definitely didn't need me uh my stepdaddy was basically he said mm -hmm. he's like ah, oh, you only get one percent so <laughs> which is it's fine. It's completely fine. You know, it's it's just a, a, a good experience to, to um, deal with being on the listing side. Um, so it'll still be a check, just not as big. Um, so I get so they did a total of four percent. So the buyer's agent will still get their three percent. And then I collect my little one percent. But that's OK. That's OK. Um, it's a blessing in it's I'm going to consider myself blessed. Anyways, that's the update. I'm done talking because I'm honestly really sleepy. Um, I hope y'all enjoy that. Subscribe, like, share. Bye.